Well, hello and um, welcome everyone to this session of Bokmex 50 Shades of Gothic. Uh, this interview is going to be a bit, little bit different from the rest of the sessions that we will have in the six different panels with scholars and experts in the field. As part of the series in this introductory session entitled Making the Gothic, we have the pleasure of having here with us today Spanish movie director and scriptwriter Manolo Munguia. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you for inviting me. So as a brief introduction to our speaker, after studying telecommunications engineering in Santander and film direction in Barcelona, both in Spain, Manolo worked as a director of photography in short films such as Colmillos de Felpa and Envidia, and directed two short films with presence in international film festivals, Go and Rota. With his directional feature film debut, House, Manolo wants to warn us all about new technologies growing faster than the security applied to them. So as Manolo puts it, quote, a smart enough 12 year old with a laptop could get into a hotel or log into the free Wi-Fi simply because the password is written in a post-it next to the front desk. Take control of the router because nobody changed the default admin password and sniff from there the traffic data from the hotel customers using that Wi-Fi at the moment. And all of this while sitting in the lobby with a glass of Coke, unquote. So um, I'm sure that we all have our own reservations about technology as a source of insecurities, both about the present and about our future. And, and I think that the concerns that you pose in this quote that I've just read um, are very relevant. And we have we have become so so used to to the technologies and that that we use in our everyday lives and to giving away our, our data and our privacy that we tend to forget the implications that these things have so to open up our discussion um i want to begin to by asking you why did you choose horror as a genre to express these concerns what do you think that's um the interest in in making the gothic so to speak in to to express these these preoccupations with with the um, with the internet and the privacy and all these these things. Right. Uh, well, so thanks again, first of all, for, for inviting me and, and for having me here. Um, so um, I'm a big fan of genre films uh, since, since always. Uh, also science fiction. So what I try to do with this is to go to the, um, the knowledge that I had, let's say, in networks and technologies and then they just put it on the screen, trying to reach uh, the audience and trying for them to be cautious on what they do regarding uh, new technologies, especially new technologies. As you said, Laura, uh, nowadays, every time that we install an application on our phone, there is uh, this agreement that nobody reads and we all accept. Uh, when you browse through a homepage we never visited, we have a pop-up with the cookies that says, accept all the cookies. We really don't stop to read that. And, that, and that's risky. I'm not saying that we should not do it, but I'm saying that is risky. And the main problem is, from my point of view, the security that we have implemented in the new technologies is not good enough. It's not running at the same speed as the new technologies run. So that's, that's what makes us really vulnerable. And that was the main reason for me to try to make, a, well, to make the movie that, that we're talking about today. So you said that you really like um, gender movies. What what do you think are some of your reference or your influences that motivated you to to go in this direction as a um, movie director? Right. I'm I'm much more a fan of of, of the fear that you don't see than the ones you see. I, I like both, right? But uh, there is the one that where where the main character goes around the door, opens the door of class. You get a scare moment. And then there are these other ones that that's, it's all growing in your head and you, you feel there is something wrong and, and it keeps growing. And that's, that's the fear I like the most. So for this, uh, for this film, for making house, uh, there were several references, very clear. Uh, for example, one of them is called The Invitation. So in The, in the Invitation by Karen Kusama, um, it's also a dinner of friends and also the tension and the fear start growing. You see that something is going on, something is happening. 
and it becomes really, really scary at the end, but, but you don't know what it is, you just feel it, and you can tell it in the characters. Uh, coherence is another reference uh, thing that we watch, which is, which is also very scary on how things turn around in a regular situation and normal things. So those, those two are really a, a reference. So the, the main thing that these movies, that the, both these movies that you mentioned and your movie, it's that the, um, the common, so to speak, horror or gothic trope that the, they clearly have is the house, yes. um, which is a central element in, in your movie. Not only it is the title, but also the whole thing takes, well, most of the thing takes place in, in this one house. Yes. So how, how do you choose it? How, how is the location relevant mm. to construct this, this fear that you speak about? Yeah, right. Um, I always have it very clear that there were three pillars in the film to make it happen. The number one, of course, is story. It had to be solid. It had to, um, to catch the audience. It had to uh, also teach uh, and, and get this goal that I wanted with the film of, of be conscious uh, every time that you accept or, or, or you manage your passports. So the story was uh, pillar number one for sure. The second one were the actors. I needed real actors. I couldn't do the, a, a film with, uh, let's say, friends or something like that. Needed everybody to believe the story and to believe the actors. If, if one actor fails, then the whole thing goes down, I would say. And the number three was the house. As you said, I mean, not even for the title, but everything, for, I would say 90% of the film happens inside the house. So the house had to be uh, had to have the, the, its own presence and it was almost one more character and i found this house actually in in, in, in my hometown in my region in the north of spain mm -hmm. in this house is in the in the picos europa mm -hmm. uh, it's a house for rent but it had something that i really wanted which is on the bottom floor it's all one single um, room uh, so we're talking about something like 120 meters uh, square uh, in, a, in a single room uh, closed where we could manage the light at all times and where especially we could manage the camera left and right and making different types of shots without being bored uh, for the audience. So yeah, the house has a very, very strong presence and it's a real house and I invite everybody uh, to visit it, as I said, very, very close to Bottas in the Picos de Europa. So thinking about this, um, connecting this both to the um, the invitation, mm -hmm. which is a movie that has um, it doesn't have a steel camera, so the camera moves a lot, yes. and this in relation to what you mentioned about the open plan in the house and how you move the shots. How do you think the movement of the camera? How do you think about this design of the movie? How of mm -hmm. this process of creation of moving the camera, of editing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, photography affect this this creation? This again, this idea of creating the fear, the the horror right. movie how that's I, manipulating the audience. I think the magic is uh, when you put things uh, in front of the camera and somehow you feel them, somehow you see them although you don't really realize about them sometimes. So uh, in, in the case of House uh, on the film, uh, I gave three clear instructions to the actors. Uh, I said, well, you, you clearly have three moments and actually we're going to uh, shoot them sequentially in this, in, in this order. Moment number one is, is uh, happy. So you, you are together, it's, you, you haven't seen each other for many years, so it's, it's joy. It's, it's wine, it's uh, everybody's tough, happy and cheap. Number two is what's going on. So the, 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 the first, uh, let's say, few months, uh, not few months, the first switch on the, on the story happens. So, uh, okay, what's up with this application? Is this for real? What's going on? So that's a tension moment. The third moment is terror. That's, that's when we're all going to die. Uh, uh, how can we end this? This is a nightmare. And the camera movements uh, go accordingly. If you look at the film at the very, very beginning, everything is done with travelings, um, with the sliders. So all, all the picture is really smooth all the time. If you check the film at the end, it's actually our director of photography with the camera on the shoulder. So the camera is, 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 is slightly uh, making this movement to create a little tension and, 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 and switches directly like this from one actor to the other. And that's done on purpose to follow this order too to create this uncomfortable situation in the audience. So this, this 
whole idea of the camera also makes me think of um, a topic that uh, we will bring up on our panel regarding cyber horror, um, that it's the, um, the trend that's very common. Well, I, I don't know if common, but it's becoming more popular of desktop horror that I guess comes from the tradition of um, this, this kind of horror that's recorded from the perspective of the people who are living in it at the moment. Right. So do you, how do you feel about this type of horror? Do you, do you have any reference, any, anything that you find interesting? Because it, it right. connects to, to your interests regarding mm -hmm. technology and the internet and, and all these, these issues with privacy, because sometimes these desktop horror movies have to do with missing people yes. or computer, found phones or found computers. And that, that's the issue of privacy underlying all this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yes, um, I like them a lot. I think they are very smart. Um, I, I think they, they use uh, something that I also try to use in our thing, which is uh, reality. So you try for the audience to buy uh, all, the, all the story. And in that way, for example, with the film uh, Searching, which is, a, I think, a very good reference. Mm -hmm. so, and I think they are starting to, to, to shoot the second part. The film searching has um, everything that you see in the screen, you can recognize. Uh, you can recognize your computer, the programs that you're using, the software. You can see yourself with the guy searching in the maze, doing what he does, you could be doing it because he's not, he's not really a hacker, he's just a regular user. Um, everything I try to explain in, in the story, um, okay, yes. everything that I try to explain in the story of House, uh, also at the very beginning, is, is like that. Everything is real. Everything that is mentioned at the very beginning, all the stories are actually my own personal stories. That those beautiful things happen to me. Then when we go into WikiLeaks, uh, Yelena's hands, all of these things, all of that is for real. And, and some people ask me, is, uh, uh, is this for real? And I said yes. All the all the first forty minutes of the film are for real. And so the audience gets trapped because he says, "Yeah, I read about this in the news. Oh yeah, I saw about this in Yelena's hands on, on here and there." So. Um, so yeah, in terms of references, yeah, searching, um, and of course I like also the Windows one uh, from yeah. um, uh, uh, ah, I forgot the name of the director from Cantabria also. Oh, um, I, don't, I, I don't know that one, but, yeah, but searching searching is a very interesting example yes. too because it also towards the end it not only uses desktop images but it also includes surveillance cameras. Yes. Yes. which I thought it's very interesting when it's thinking about these privacy issues. Exactly, exactly, yes, it's very smart. And, and nowadays, the thing with the cameras, we're using cameras right now, we all have cameras. Not, not only we all have cameras, but we can count often, what, what five, ten cameras in our own houses. If you start with the, the phones, yeah. maybe you have one, two, the computers, one, two, maybe the, the video games, the TV, sometimes have its own camera. So how many cameras did the security ones? How many cameras do you have? Okay. So how many cameras did you have at home 20 years ago? Okay. One, maybe the one from your father or something like that. So that's that's really risky and, and appealing at the same time. So that's it's it's um it's a very interesting feeling because it's it's risky and you say, well, it's dangerous, but then also it's, it attracts you, right? So so going back to these um, cinematographic elements of making the Gothic, we've talked about um, camera movements and editing and such. And um, I was also thinking about other elements such as lightning and music, or, or rather the music sound, because sound mm -hmm. includes, I guess, both, both music and silence. And silence has a very important role in movies, as you were saying, yes. if, if we differentiate from jump scare movies that use the sound to, to also scare you, and, and other types of uses of the music. How, mm -hmm. how do you include those in your, in your fiction and, and what reference, all, again, do you think are interesting yes. in this sense? Um, I think everything in movies is, is, is really important. The lighting, uh, to begin with the lighting, the lighting was, uh, I would say, a really key element. We have a, a master in, in our team. We have the pleasure to get uh, Iñaki Gorraiz, who was our uh, director of photography. He's been actually working in LA uh, in the past and he's really experienced. He loved the ideas of jumping. 
Uh, and that's why the look, the visual on, on the film is, is so good because we manage really good lenses uh, with, with uh, good cinematography cameras. And that's why all, all the lighting and all the look of the film is so good. As for the music, it was really, really interesting to build it up because uh, we had some ideas, but we really didn't know how to do this. So uh, I have to say, just in case, this is, this is really our first thing. So it's the first time that we face like a large project like this. Um, and the music, um, at the very beginning, we, we got a, a, a musician, um, his name is Abel Jazz, he's a great one. And initially what he was building was like, this, this, this is not really what we want, it's not really the atmosphere we want to create. But somehow, very, very quickly, um, when we started to express what we needed, uh, the feelings that the actors had in, it's one of the moments, as I've said before, we got it and, and really, really fast we got a line. So all these three moments of tension that I, that I mentioned before, the joy, the what's going on, and then the terror, he was able to picture them in, 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 in notes, in music. And that was fascinating. I, I have no idea how, how he did it, but it was really, really impressive when he showed us the result and we said, this is fabulous. This is it's so good. And, and we, we really um, enjoyed it a lot and we really uh, you know, it did a great deal of work. So thinking about this, um, this last part of the terror that you mentioned, I was wondering how, how do you think this terror works as a trope? So I was trying to think of this in terms of, of, of the Gothic trope and I was thinking of the monster and the, the the shapeshifter also came to mind, which is an element that it's it's been in our folklore for centuries. This mm -hmm. idea that there's this monster that will come and replace us and other people wouldn't realize that it's replaced us. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is something that that's mentioned in your in your movie with artificial intelligence. And that's yes. also it's also very common in science fiction um, when the robot sub substitutes or it's a, I'm thinking of a very classical example of the step for wives, yeah. where they just robot changes the wives and then just so some people don't realize and others are just happier that it's this this bettered version that's substituting right. us. So right. I was wondering, what do you think um, are the peculiarities that these these changes, this, this duplicity has in contemporary culture? Um, Okay, if we go back a little to the reference of, of, of the film itself, this uh, replacement, let, let me call it, is already happening, not in a physical form. We don't see ourselves, other, other ourselves in the street walking, but we get fishing. Uh, we all have a mail uh, saying, I'm your bank account, please uh, give me your data because I'm going to make you a million dollar transfer. And uh, please help this Nigerian prince, uh, which is now, uh, yeah, in need on your support. And so we get replaced uh, by our mailboxes to, to another one. As soon as we get a Trojan or a virus in, the, in our computers, then our mailbox sends um, uh, things that we are not aware of in our behalf. So uh, that's really scary. And what, what I tried with the film also is to bring this fear into, into everybody in the audience that, that of course, I, I went a step forward and that's, that's the science fiction part. But yes, uh, I feel that with all the, let's say, big data that exists nowadays uh, in the cloud, with all the technologies and how fast they grow, with all the vulnerability that, that we do have uh, on this, it would be very easy for a machine to replace us. As I said, maybe not physically, but now, this is a video conference. You are not really meeting me in person, right? I could be a video generated <laughs> picture. <laughs> because well, what this is, is this? is happening flat, with, right? the, so, with the deep, deep exactly. voice. Is it called? That's, that's, that's really scary to me. Exactly. That's what I mean. I mean, I, I'm talking, but any computer can talk. And you are seeing a picture. Yeah, but, but you know the, the, the fake um, uh, face that is being now used in all the films. So you put the face on, on a famous actor, you know, he's there into the, in, in, into the face of somebody else. And, and it works because you, you will not notice. So we're really close to, to being replaced in this kind of level. And that's the scary part. But so far we think the artificial intelligence is going to be on our side, 
that's, that's, that's we hope, right? But what if not? What if that's not the case? What if something changes on that? So that's, that's what the movie brings. That's the fear. <laughs> hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so to conclude, um, thinking about this, what you just said, so underneath it all, um, we, we could easily argue that there's a political and a social concern. Um, and, and this happens also in, in, many, in many different iterations of, of horror movies, because they could talk about racial injustices as, as mm -hmm. Lovecraft Country does. Or um, I was thinking when you were speaking about the privacy issues, I was also thinking from the, uh, about the 2018 movie Assassination Nation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this one, but yeah, this is about um, a, a group of friends that get... Um, prosecuted by a mob because the town thinks that they've leaked private videos of, exactly. of each other. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so in this sense, I was thinking that um, there's three, three things that um, we can concern ourselves with here. So there's the political part of it, which is mostly what happens in your movie, because it's mm -hmm. the government that own the app that can be dangerous, but it can also be companies. Um, which I guess um, the um, the Netflix documentary the um, what's it called the social the social dilemma that's what they they mm -hmm. kind of speak about an assassination nation which speaks about the fear that other people can get our information so I guess there's the government companies and other people mm -hmm. so how do you think um, do do you think that all of these concerns operate at the same level? Or, or what do you think are the, the horrors that the terror that you're most um, concerned with? Here's the thing: um, if you want to be a, a okay, if you want to be a terrorist with guns, I guess you need the guns and uh, you need some other training and you, you need some support. You need certain things that are not reachable for everybody. But as you said at the very beginning of this, a, a laptop, a computer. Is reachable for basically any kid. Any kid with parents and says, I really want a computer for, for 300 euros or, or, or even cheaper. You, you have a computer good enough to, to run Kali Linux on it and, and to be able to connect to the Wi Fi and the neighbors. If the kid is smart enough, it's going to be way more dangerous than the terrorist with a gun. Way more dangerous. The movie that you just mentioned, as is Nation Nation. That's, that's the end. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. It's a kid with a laptop. That's it. That, that's a kid that causes absolutely everything. So that's that's the risk thing. I mean, and I'm saying this because I know about these things, and and they're really risky. And you don't know what's going on with the neighbors in your apartment next to you. You don't know if they have entered your router because it's super easy. And if they have entered your router, if they have access to your router. They can monitor everything that you're doing at home, everything. So it's that's that's the that's the fear, and um, the the I get joy and happiness every time that somebody watches the film and says, "I'm going to change all my passwords, starting by the one the router." That's the first thing you should protect yourself a little, at least a little. You will still be vulnerable, but maybe a little less. So that's that's the most fear uh, for me nowadays in our society. Well, thank you very much. And I think that um, with that warning, I'm going to move on to and open this to the public and see if someone has any okay. questions for you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And you can raise your hand. And OK, I have Monica here. Um, hello again. Uh, thank you very much for your talk, um, Manolo. I found it really fascinating and I, I really liked your film as well. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, some issues that you have indeed mentioned, uh, but uh, it seems a bit of a repetition, but I want to focus on, on a specific part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you about how you engage um, with um, horror film tradition, and, and you have already mentioned a few films, um, and you have mentioned them in, in a broad term, in, in the topics that they deal with. But I would like to ask you more about uh, cinematic techniques, and, and you've also talked about uh, your use of traveling 
and all that stuff. Uh, but I was thinking um, when I was watching the film, there are several moments and I'm thinking of, I think it's the moment when Rafa says uh, something about the, um, the files that he has downloaded. And he says something like, it's not only videos. And at this moment, the rest of the people in the room know that he has downloaded them, that he has uh, found, well, downloaded them and uh, found about the password yeah. and then opened them. So there is a silence and there's some people tears in, in their eyes because that without having really said that, uh, he has implied that he has managed what everyone wanted, to, everyone wants him to manage. And then, then there is the silence and and some uh, the camera I think zooms and we see Rafa's face and everyone's a bit like really shaken. There's some yeah. tears. And I thought this is a um, um, what's the word like a, a tra um, something that is used in in mm -hmm, horror mm -hmm. films, a convention yeah. in terms of cinematography in horror films. But um, in a more traditional horror films, uh, maybe they're talking about someone who's dead and has come from the dead or ghosts or things like that. And in this yeah. case, we're talking about something which is really familiar to us, like files, apps. And um, to me, this and in other moments that music is used or zoom ins, this creates a sort of defamiliarizing effect of something uncanny. And, and this is something that is really related to the Gothic genre, mm -hmm. like um, this defamiliarization, this um, weird moment in which we seem something is really familiar, but a bit. And I, I don't know if you have any, any thoughts of that. If you engage with this tradition, but you sort of want to establish a, a parody or it was my it was just my perception I, I, that's a lot of things but i think uh, you know <laughs> no. which direction i'm taking because i think you're doing something really new so um it's it's yeah, yeah. thank you yes <laughs> yes of course the background of, of, of these movies with tension uh and then horror uh, is, is there in all of them um specifically this moment was almost always uh, prepared uh, like a moment of growing tension, little by little, touching points that are risky, touching points that are dangerous and start feeling uncomfortable. And then Rafa drops a bomb. That's it. Then he says, okay, here it is. And, and as you said, there is this quiet moment of everybody. Some of them are not sure. Some of them are, have a real clear um, um, impression on what's going on and, and they, they realize and then believe what's happening. The, the, some don't believe it, some some immediately realize what's going on and how big is this thing. And then uh, what happens right after, uh, of course the silence is there are really, really important to, to be managed. But what happens after is, is uh, what was happening in reality. I mean, the, the character that doesn't believe it says, can you prove it? I mean, I, I don't buy it. I mean, everybody's doing this. Every, all the world is trying to crack these files. And you said you cracked them, I don't believe you, I don't buy it. So show me something. And that's, that's the Pandora's box, right? Yes, uh, this, this, this tension, um, somehow not looking for a specific model, but, but yes, this tension of the camera, this tension, especially on, on the sounds and in the silences, is done on purpose. Right? And it brings the tension, um, it tries to bring the tension on the customer. So that the customer feels like one more person on the table. And now process with you as her. And realize what it means. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have another question from Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for your fascinating talk. And um, you know, having a creator in this scholarly series is amazing. So thank you, really. Um, so staying in the realm of Gothic, I was thinking that the Gothic has been traditionally used to channel anxieties that have to do with the past and how the past haunts us in many ways. But it's clear that the new technologies are giving rise to new anxieties having to do with our powerlessness uh, in the face of, you know, um, uh, our, our inability to understand the real potential that uh, technology has. And I think that house your film uh, shows that. So I was wondering as a filmmaker, um, do you think that the Gothic has specific, a specific potential to look not to our, to our past, but rather to our present and to our near future? 
for instance, you were talking about fishing as sort of a contemporary way of revisiting this trope of identity replacement. So what are right. these sort of new ghosts uh, that we may encounter in pop culture that have to do with these new um, vulnerabilities? Right. <laughs> I, I think we see it every day and sometimes we don't realize it. Um, you just said that the, in, in, let's say, in classic horror films, the past is hunting the, the, the main character. The past is hunting us, right? Okay. What is big data? What, what, are, what is that we're watching every day on the, this, this politician, this famous guy, put this tweet in 2014 and now it's published all over because he's saying green now and by then he's all red. Um, all the history, everything is documented. I mean, it, it, this is the new uh, technology and, and the new big data where everything that you do gets, gets stored. And, and everything, if it gets digitalized, if it touches the internet, then there's no way to stop it. It's going to be replicated all over. It's, it's, you have to realize that somebody's going to make a copy of that something, and that's going to hang you forever. This video we're making today, it will be stored, let's say, YouTube or on a video server, but it will be backup and replicated in, in databases that we will not know about. So everything that we are saying today will be available forever. And then you pass a voice recognition, and then we'll capture all the text. And maybe I'm saying something that is wrong, and it will harm me <laughs> in 10 years <laughs> when they say, hey, you said during this video conference uh, that this thing was it. So that's, that's the past hunting us. So yes, I think it's updated uh, to, to our nowadays, but of course, the, I, I, feel, I think there are many, many similarities of the, with the past hunting, the main character. And the rest of the audience. Yeah, thank you. I love the idea of this video haunting us forever and becoming a gothic item in itself. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a final question from Anna. Hi again, and um... Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the uh, very interesting and insightful answers you've given so far. Um, what I wanted to uh, ask you is, uh, are there different levels of reading in your film, uh, depending on how much uh, the audience is familiar with the terminology, with the issues related with security and, uh, and these uh, technology related uh, problems? Or is there, I don't know, uh, did you have a specific public in mind when you made the film or did you make it in a way in which I can read some things if I'm very familiar with, mm -hmm. with the informatic uh, technology, or I can understand some things anyway, even if I'm not familiar with it, because I, you know, uh, maybe we didn't have any problems understanding what they were saying, what your characters were saying, but I imagine that if a, a viewer is not very familiar with mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. issues of security, I mean, uh, there are people out there that uh, don't really know much about mm -hmm. it. And if you're a constant victim of phishing, probably you, you don't really understand what's going on at, at all moments, you know? Right. Yes, I understand the question. That's, that's actually a really good one. And when, when I first wrote the script, uh, it was, we had too many technical moments. Uh, there was a moment in particular, for example, they were reading memory positions from, from, from the code. Uh, that's, let's say, that's really complex to explain and to see on the screen. So let's say, yes, that it was really going too technical. And I noticed, and, and the rest of the film colleagues uh, told me about it, uh, they said, this goes too much technical, and, and they were right. So, made, so we made it softer. Software means uh, let's try to reach more audience. We cannot have uh, people lost within the film saying, okay, I don't know what they're talking about anymore. Uh, there are two characters in particular 
that has the connect um, they connect the audience with what's going on every time that i realize like maybe this is not understood for everybody there is for example the character eva mm -hmm. she raises the hand and says okay what's going on i, I don't understand what so what is the back name and then somebody explains what explains is a little and bit and then and then there is the other character says okay so all the files are, they are not indexed on google and then some other character explains why they are not indexed so the moment when i felt the average person is going to get lost here there is somebody that jumps in and explains what's going on and that's really that explanation is not really for the character it's really for the viewer it's for the audience so Initial, answering your question initially at the, at the very first script, the film was looking and going deep into the technical level, but then it got decreased. Let's say then it got softer. We removed the complication, the complicated things. We tried to make it everything understandable for the average person. There is this, um, there was this film festival in Algeciras. Uh, I was, I was impressed because uh, a group of all women, like 60, 60 something, uh, stopped me at the end of the screen and they said, well, the movie was late, for, so we were just going to watch 10 minutes. But then it got interested and more interested and we ended up watching it all. And I was like, oh, this is definitely the film, not the profile <laughs> of the people I, I, was, I was trying to reach. I was trying to reach more like the guys with the phone on their hands all the time. But still, they were able to follow the movie. And even if they didn't, even if they didn't understand what was the deep web, that's fine because they were able to continue with the story. So it's yeah, made so for them. Probably the it's it's indeed the um, the familiarity we have with uh, thinking, uh, knowing somehow that we are having issues with internet security. Probably even just that awareness made it interesting for exactly. them i guess exactly they don't know what is cyber security but now they maybe know what that hey maybe i should cover this camera because they are looking <laughs> or things like that yeah yeah thank you thank you well so if there's not any more questions i i think we can now come up on camera for for a final goodbye and thank you to Manolo Munguia for being here with us today. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And I think um, this, this session adds a different perspective to our series from, from, from the perspective of a creator. And I think it's it's been very interesting for us as well. It was my pleasure. It was really an honor. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I really enjoyed it. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.